Hi again, this is Noah Bradley with Handmade Houses. Welcome to episode six of Handmade House TV. Thank you for joining us today. I'm, uh, today I'm standing in a corner, standing in the corner of the log cabin. Uh, hopingly you guys have never been sentenced to standing in the corner, but I thought that chances are I could stand here in this corner and share a bit with you today. And, um, and uh, I think you would find it very entertaining or enjoyable, maybe educational. Look forward to hang on. Some of us as adults are needed to sentence to stand in the corner occasionally, but I uh, wanted to point out some things here. Uh, first of all, this is, a, this is a vintage log cabin that was built uh, 150 to 200 years ago. Uh, the logs have never once been treated. They've never been sealed. Uh, they've never had any bug application applied to it and they are here just as stout and pretty today as as they were the day that uh, the day that they were hewn and put up here and that's uh, that's a good starting point hewn the definition of hewn and it's it was a traditional way of building a log cabin is is that they would take take round logs that gathered locally the closer to the home the better they were less hauling than needed to be doing it and then the top of the logs and the bottom are still the rounded logs, just like they are the tree in the woods. Uh, the bark was taken off of them. Quite often the bark would actually fall off during the hewing process or during the, the timbering process. So it really didn't need a, a fancy tool known as a draw knife to really remove it. If you cut it the right time of year, it's gonna fall off. So, but anyways, you can see that the logs are flat on the faces on the front and back side of the, the log. And what the how they would how that would have been done is not like you see in the modern timber kits where an adz was used that would create a chopping effect in the logs, but in, but instead um, they were the the round part of the log was notched using using an axe every every couple of feet, and then an axe would come down from above and slice off those chunks uh, in a in a slicing slicing motion in each one of them and so you can see some of the original chop marks in the logs you can see some of the slice marks as it comes down in order to hew them flat there's a lot of benefits to having a flat uh, inside and outside of a cabin rather than a round one in virginia you do not find any vintage round log cabins they're all they were they were basically the temporary primitive shelters that people would live in until they rotted and went away um, and they were the they were the camp camper they were the survivalistic structures that just would not survive and one of the key things is that by hewing you're removing the sap wood the outer layer of a tree and that's the one where the most prone toward insect infestation also uh, you would so you would be exposing the heartwood the, the the center of the log by hewing and that, that is a much harder, durable, more weather resistant, more bug resistant uh, species, the part of the log than, than not. Uh, but one of the key things is, is, is the proper chinking of a log in its, in its preservation. And if you'll notice that when we chink a log cabin, that we, that we recess the chink joints back at the top. So there's actually like a, a drip edge that's created and then we would bring we bring the chinking out flush to the to the log below that, so that when when water when when it would rain the water would run down the surface of the log, and then on this little edge it would create a drip edge, which would cause it to drop off, hit the chink joint, run back out flush to the next log, and continue that path. So it would it would almost waterfall down, and whereas when you have a round log, the water would would land on it follow the surface of it around and go right back inside and rot the logs out and get water inside of your home. And of course, there's also benefits to, be, to a hewn log. And I'm standing on a little bit of a scary site here, so it's a little bit steep in this corner. So if you see me wiggling around, it's okay. And if you see me falling, don't, don't laugh. Uh, but, uh, but uh, okay, so, so, so th there are other advantages. A lot of times when you live in a log cabin, you, you, this, this was the framing of your home, just like two by fours are today. 
It wasn't cool to be in a log cabin, and frequently people wanted to put siding up over top of the log cabin to look like they were living in a more civilized home. So if you if you if you made them flat on the outside, it was easy it was easy to put siding up the inside. And also on the inside, you end up with a flat wall surface, which is nice to hang your paintings on and and look a little bit more civilized. You could even whitewash the inside of the logs and get a white white clean surface. Uh, rather than something that's just totally irregular and uh, make the lady of the house happy so that she can hang her needlepoint. Um, so th when it comes time to, to, to put the logs up back way back when, um, you, the, uh, the, the particular notches that we see here are called what I call V-notches. And uh, it was, it's very common. Uh, it and the half, de half dovetail are the most popular um, uh, notches that I see. Um, and uh, it, was, it was easy to do. You could do it basically with an axe, whereas if you do the half dovetail, you need a saw and an axe. But, uh, but he would just notch it out. And basically what they're doing, they're just, they, you create a little mini house top, a little rooftop, just like a Monopoly house. And then the log above it, you create a little hand in order to embrace it. And then on top of the one, that one, you put another little rooftop and a hand to brace it, go corner to corner. Uh, this is the way a log cabin is built. This is the, this is the time proven method. This is the type that will survive. And any modern invention that comes up ends up messing things up one way or the other. Um, I know that for some, when they first see a, a vintage log cabin, they're a little confused with the chinking space. Um, and, and it's a little, a little perplexing, but the, yeah, you'll find out that the more, you, more knowledge you gain of a vintage log cabin, the more you begin to appreciate chinking. And I'm going to go into an episode in the future and I'll demonstrate myself chinking and tell you how it's done. But for today, I want to just point out to you a couple of features about the chinking and, and a couple of the benefits of chinking. Um, th for one thing, this, this chinking we applied Ooh, it was it was every bit of 25 years ago and it's it's perfect it's in perfect condition we used uh, a special blend of of cement and it's not that any any cement will work fine but but we use a special blend a special manufacturer and we only do that because of a consistent dye color I don't like my chinking joints to look like somebody's sidewalk I like a little bit of a tan color I don't know if this will come up in the film or not um, but but it's a, it's an off it's an off-white it's a tan and it's more earthy it doesn't again it doesn't look like an urban sidewalk it looks like a country chink job and uh, but nonetheless it's solid as a it's solid as can be I did not need to use perma chink I'll get into that one in a future episode as well but nonetheless this is very durable and it works and it's it's the, it's the cheapest you can put in it's the best and how often in life does that happen um, also, uh, let me point out the, uh, the, 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 the logs are massive, they're beautiful. Uh, and, and one thing that you'll probably, you might have noticed by now is that, is that the logs are poplar. Uh, poplar being one of the four most common types of logs found in the Virginia area. It, it, what, the species varies from area to area, but for most of Pennsylvania all the way down to South Carolina, uh, a poplar is one of the four big species. Um, the, the, the one peculiarity of poplar that you'll notice, and this is tulip poplar, for those of you in, uh, in Maine and whatever else, there's, another, there's other branches of the poplar family, but for in Virginia it's a tulip poplar. Uh, you'll notice is that, is that when poplar dries, it never fails, 90% uh, of the time that you end up with a, cr with a major crack right down the center of the wood. And uh, it's a defining feature, and I've actually seen it to the point where you can almost see a little light going on the inside. So it gives you a little fresh air without having to open the window. Of course, that can be remedied in, a, uh, in, in several ways. Um, but but the, the reason why I do it is that, is that poplar, poplar is smooth. Uh, as it ages, it almost wears smooth, and it's basically splinter-free. And it's the only one of the of the log species that I that I uh, that I encounter uh, that is that is lovable. That that is you, you just you can't help but touch it. You can't. I notice when I give tours of the homes and everything that people just walk over and they start they start petting poplar, petting poplar. 
Um, so it's uh, interesting. Uh, the, the, one of the, the greatest things about poplar, beside it being abundant and being beautiful and being uh, strokeable, is, is that it, is, um, it is, has a high R value. It's, a, it's very insulated because it is so light. Uh, it's so porous. Uh, I mean, so many, the, it's, 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 it's more like insulation than it is like a rock. And so it's a, it's a better it's a better if you're if you're concerned about uh, R values in a log cabin, and if you are, chances are you ought to think about timber framing. But that's another episode as well. Uh, but um, the the negative, the bad thing about poplar uh, is that is that poplar will last four to eight months laying on the ground, and it'll rot away. It is probably the fastest decomposing wood that I know of in our area. Up north, I'm sure you could get into some of the aspens or, or the white pines that might rival it or beat it. But in Virginia, she'll rot away just like that. So why is it that a 200 year old cabin made out of poplar that rots so easy is still here with no with no sealer ever applied to it. Hmm. And the answer to that is twofold. Uh, it's not touching the ground. And it's built properly. And that is that no logs touch each other. That's why log cabin kits built today need sealers. That's the number one reason. There are others but they don't touch. And in between is chinking, where the water gets on it and flows away. It's okay for wood to get wet as long as it can quickly dry away, as long as it quickly can dry out. Air gets to it and it goes away. It'll last. But if you ever have a situation where wood touches wood, water finds its way in, it will rot itself out. So the, this, this form of, of log construction is perfect. The guys 150, 200 years ago figured out the best way to build a log cabin. And this is, this is it. And I know it frustrates many today that they try to create new techniques, new ways, new milling steps in order to improve some way or another the construction of a log cabin. But the truth is that it's already been done and it's the easiest way to do it there is. It's the way that I've chosen to do it. It's timeless. And again, you can see it's 200 years old. I came in and did a restoration of it, replaced the roof and stuff like that, replaced the chinking. But the cabin has survived 200 years. And the chinking and the restoration I did, it'll be around another 200. And that's what we want. Well, okay, that does it for today. Uh, thank you for standing in the corner with Noah Bradley on this Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you next week on episode seven. We're coming along in this series. I'd like to thank four more people for signing up for the Handmade House Academy. Brian Zirkel, John Garland, John Spiva, and Maria Marchi. Thank you uh, guys a whole lot for supporting uh, Handmade House TV and for your kind words as far as being a part of the Academy where you can find everything you want to know. So we encourage everyone watching Handmade House TV to come see us. Come see the Handmade House Academy offering page to learn more about this program. And until uh, next Wednesday, we'll, we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks a lot. Bye.